Okie doke, so I'm back with uh, the Zoho guys again. If you uh, Welcome people back. Want. Yeah, it's good to be back. Uh, beautiful Pleasanton, California. Um, if you guys could just briefly introduce yourselves again, just in case anyone hasn't seen the first the first video. I'm uh, Raju Agesna, evangelist for Zoho. I'm Sridhar Rainbow, I'm the CEO of Zoho. Great, so uh, when I was last here, uh, you guys had got out a read-only version of your writer product, which is like Google Docs and Word mm -hmm. and things like that. Uh, you just announced uh, a new version. Can you tell us a little bit about um, what that new version has and what's yeah. cool about it? Well, there's a second phase of our Zoho offline story. And in this phase, well, in the first phase, we have provided a read-only version. In this phase, we provide read-read version, where now, if you're using Zoho Writer, you can now edit your documents while you're offline and sync those changes back to your online version. And now you're uh, online. Cool. So. Uh, can you walk us through the process? Like, what what actually happens? How does the syncing occur? And what's it like for a user to actually go offline and such? Yeah, when the user uses Zoho Writer, and before he goes offline, he clicks on Go Offline. So that is when we download all the documents and all the related stuff in the offline mode. That is where we use your plugin. So if the user has Google GS plugin installed on the browser in Chrome Explorer or Firefox, he click, when he clicks on Go Offline, we download all the data and save it in the local database that's part of the Google Gears. And then the user, all the documents are downloaded. The user can edit the documents, view them, make changes, save them locally. And whenever he goes back online, or whenever he's connected to the internet, he can click on Go Online. And that is when we make sure that uh, we check whether any files have been changed, okay. or the local documents have been changed. If they are, then we check the online versions. Based on that, we then give the user an option to uh, will you make it the latest version in our language. Okay, so if there's like a document that a couple of people are collaborating on, I went offline, made some edits, you made some edits too. When I go back online again, it's going to make sure that there's no collisions there. Yeah, so we kind of mentioned that there is a, a version change in our language and yeah. there's a different version in the offline. So we tell the user that they So you don't like merge the changes back in that case. Okay. Most the usual case is where the online is one version behind. Then we would ask them, would you want us to just upload this as the latest? Right. That would be the easy one. The more difficult case is where that's what actually took us a lot of time. When two people have worked on it offline and they both are doing it, one of them has done it and then the other person now is doing it. Then it's just like the you know, versioning systems, we'll have to, they have to merge that. But we'll show the diff and then I'll merge it back. Oh, okay, cool. So it'll tell you like there's no collisions, this just happened, or you, know, you edited the same line here exactly. and all that kind of stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, cool. And so when you go offline, does it download your entire document repository, or do you say I want the last 20, or how does that work? In this phase, well, yeah. So it, do, it basically we have an advanced option. By default, we download 15 documents <coughs> on your personal uh, docs folder. Okay. And there's a shared documents section where we download another 15 now. But they can set it to 25 each. 25. That's the okay. max we do now. But we are going to make it, once we get this whole thing more automated, we can put all the option to do the entire document repository they want. Okay. Cool. Yeah, we want to just take it slow. Just uh, make sure that everything works perfect on phase one. So. Yeah, it totally makes sense. So, um, you know, everyone always asks us on the, the Gears mailing list and stuff, you know, what about a Sync API? And yeah. we say, sorry, <laughs> so you guys had to write a Sync API. Yeah. So what did you what did you do there? What were the trade-offs and what's it like developing a, a Sync API for this stuff? Well, I mean, we understand it's, it's tough to provide the Sync API at the infrastructure level. I mean, uh, it, it's certainly a different case for each and every application. So we kind of... Uh, uh, well, we fortunately had something like this in the Zoho Writer backend. Okay. Because it's already doing this in collaborative editing scenario. Right. And, and in fact, already people could take a difference across two previous versions of their own document and see the diff. So we had those capabilities on the server side, so we exploited the same thing here. And in fact, okay. we use the same same thing. So when you click on Go Online, that is when we use the Ajax call and use the backend version, whatever we had, to do the diff and then to basically sync up the documents. Okay. So we are not we are not doing anything in the offline mode. So when user clicks on go online, anyway, that is when we are syncing it. So that is when we are using the existing gear. So it would be, I think, harder for Google Gears itself to support this fully unless you have to publish some kind of an API spec, which both the server and the client would have to follow. Right. Okay. Cool. So, so you're able to take your existing server-side exactly. large version. Exactly. 
That's okay. okay. This no, we would definitely love for this there to be a standard in this, but I think that's that's something up to you to drive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's really hard because yeah, it's a hard problem. Yeah. You know, we see like Dojo Toolkit is doing that, and yeah. Vortex, and some other libraries, and we kind of want the libraries and you know, people like you guys to test it out. Find out no, it's also you have all kinds of these structured, unstructured images. I mean, you have all kinds of stuff there. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely stuff. So, what were some of the challenges in in getting this working? Well, in some cases, we didn't use the full functionality of Google Gates in the first phase. Okay. Uh, like, say, your uh, managed resource store and a few things. You are downloading all your content, all the content like JavaScript and, and uh, all the images. Every time we click on go offline. In this case, we define it as a J the manifest file, basically the JSON uh, file format, and we basically download the contents that are not, that have not changed or sorry, that have changed. So it's more like implementing more, getting better, yeah. and browser the problems we faced. I yeah, we faced issues. issues. Yeah. Yeah. Even now, I think some users have reported Firefox 3.0. Which came out like just <laughs> yeah. about us, <laughs> yeah. and it doesn't work. So yeah. you have to do more. <laughs> yeah, totally. Right. Yeah. So this this is like a moving target on this. You know? Yeah, I'm sure it's for you too. Yeah, so. totally, totally. And then there are some cases where if you reinstall Gears three four times on your browser, it doesn't work. Oh, right. <laughs> so uh, that's a tough one to that's debug. That's a tough one to debug. <laughs> so yeah, there are certainly some challenges challenges like that. So cool. So uh, you have this. Go offline, go online, mm -hmm. you know, mode like Google Reader has it in a lot of them. Um, what do the users think about that versus somehow having you detect if they're offline and download? They, things? the biggest request is make it some of the process automated. It's like clicking go offline. It's like taking a manual backup from them. Yeah, yeah. And how many people do that, right? <laughs> yeah. Automated. You know, you worry about it. I don't want to worry about it. Yeah. I just give you permission. I'll install the Google Gears, and then from that point onwards, I want the process to be completely. Seamless. Yeah. Which I think we know we have to get there and I'm sure that you're out there going to get there. So yeah. in many cases you don't plan going offline. Right. Yeah. You yeah. might exactly. lose your internet connection and immediately you're offline. That's the problem. What happens to your data? Right? Yeah. So that's the, the next phase. So how do cool. we yeah. automatically or seamlessly going offline online? Wait, today this mode I would call it like a it's on a plane kind of a thing where you know you're going to get on a plane so you can go offline. Right. right. Yeah. But and you just lose connectivity without Knowing it, then that's the case that people want us to handle. Right. right, yeah. And yeah, it's uh, it's funny, we did some user testing with automated stuff, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of the time people didn't even know it would work offline then mm -hmm. because uh, there was no yeah. like action. Yeah, so they we were like, assuming it wouldn't work. You're not indicated on the plane, so yeah. the status. Yeah, yeah good, yeah, good. Uh, like if, we, if we indicate, indicate it said somewhere at the client side saying that this will work in offline mode, so right. that probably will be helpful. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because yeah, it's kind of funny to see that people they're used to going in their web browser when they're online, mm. and so we're like changing the way Change they think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. in the oh, uh, this stuff will work. As they this. start getting used to these kind of apps, the expectations I think will change over time. The browser is becoming like a central way where most people work. Yeah. Yeah. Take like Gmail, a lot of people they want. Yeah. So that's work <laughs> for a lot of people. So, I mean, so yeah. I think that become more common. Cool. So uh, you did read only. Now you've got full read write functionality. What's next for you guys? What else are you exploring? That's primarily first. Before we roll out other products offline, we want to basically uh, enhance our existing uh, offline functionality. Okay. Like seamless uh, uh, moving between offline and online. So once that is done, there there are a few things. And there are people are also asking us for there's some functionality that we have a lot, I mean, a lot of the functionality observer later sits in the server side, not on the client, and those are not accessible today. Spell check is a great one. Yeah. For example, we are doing it in the server. When you go offline, where's the spell checker? Suddenly, right? Yeah. So we have to figure out you know, better ways to do this. So bring some of it during the offline mode, bring some of the spell checking stuff. You know, these are all one-time downloads we can do, the dictionary and all yeah. that. But still, that's something that you know people will come to expect. Right. right? So the user expectation. And then we will extend it once we get this right, for the and extend it to other products. Mm -hmm. And one of the plans we have is now that we have done for a document centric product, we also have the database product like those here yeah, and those products. Those we are definitely going to explore. Okay. And it's good that you have a database which can be built in because you have already thought of that structured data. So yeah. we are going to explore that 
in that direction. Okay, cool. So that's for that reason you will see more file centric applications moving offline first before the database centric applications. Right. Yeah, no, that makes sense. That makes sense. So you've got to say when you're offline in the future where you've downloaded JavaScript that can manage the spell check, you've got a dictionary, maybe it's in the database, mm -hmm. index, all that fun stuff. Um, do you think you'll get to a point where you always use the local version even when they're online? Uh, may not be actually. We are not sure of that. First, let's you know, also the size implication. You know, the user's document may be like 50 kilobytes or 100 kilobytes or you know, that, that kind of stuff. And spell checker, if you download like a massive 20 MB, yeah. people may be upset. So these are, you know, we have to handle these somewhat creatively. Yeah. And we also now support 43 languages there. so. <laughs> what do you download, right? No, you don't expect that, okay, this will be English, we have to download for this user or only Spanish or whatever. So those right. are some of the um, uh, issues. So we likely would use the online as the kind of the cold copy, but offline only when you're know, offline. But it's something, you, know, you bring up a very good point. Maybe it's an optimization strategy to use, if available, use the stuff on off. So right. Yeah, especially, in, I think that comes in when we do a seamless, seamless uh, transition between offline and online. Yeah. That is when, because if you today, if you click on go offline, that is when the documents are downloaded. But when we do seamless trans transition between offline and online, the documents have to be synchronized at the back end automatically. Right. They'll always be there. They'll, They'll always, always be there. Yeah. So at that point, you know, it might be interesting to see, consider uh, using the local version alone uh, right. and keep it synchronized. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And hopefully, yeah, the browsers are going to continue to step up, up, and we're going to get faster JavaScript. And yeah, we definitely you know. need a JIT. You know, yeah, <laughs> yeah. JavaScript. That's wonderful. yeah, totally. <laughs> and uh, yeah, once we can get it, so yeah, we have these standard libraries where we can kind of say once and for all, mm -hmm. keep this in the cache forever. Yeah. yeah, and then like you could even just uh, you know now and then do the polling. The users not do anything slowly. Keep giving them a bit more JavaScript. Yeah. And then eventually. Maybe you could gear stink and ship a standard JavaScript libraries with it, you know? <laughs> totally, yeah. No, I, I would I would love to see that. Like I would love to see kind of a, a stamp of approval on, you know, a few libraries and, and a way for people to manage that and have the browsers and gears acknowledge that when you ask for dojo.js version two, if it's already there, it could be optimized by the browser for that platform. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So all these the code, you know, the, the user experience can be massively improved. Because your application can load in like, you know, a second, half a second. So. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So uh, to finish, what are some of the other? I've seen a few other annou announcements before this on other products. What else are you guys doing here? <laughs> Quite <Yeah>. a few. We <laughs> <laughs> yeah. announced just before that, so create a database creation and scripting product, support mobile. Version. That also actually was something that we would definitely consider look for the new gears okay. in there. And before that, we announced page nation and page view kind of thing in Zoho Writer. Okay. That's one of the big ones. And uh, that functionality actually, interestingly, sits on the server side. Uh, and it's going to be, you know, <laughs> we, have, we still haven't even figured out how we are going to do that on the client yeah. side. So yeah. that's going to be a tough one. Mm -hmm. so Interesting. So your mobile view is, so it allows you. Is it web-based view on mobile or yes, J2ME it's app? Yes, it's right okay. now web-based, but we will also, now that we've got this, now we will actually also consider other J2ME uh, Okay, those, cool, those, cool. Those options. Cool. And so, so again, and if like... Android. Right, <laughs> of course, Android. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, it's, it's, it's going to be fun. <laughs> Lots of platforms. But uh, yeah, so with, so if Safari had built in you know, support with gears on mobile yeah. and stuff like that, that could yeah. be our yeah, really, yeah. yeah, that would be really helpful. Cool. Yeah. So what else would you like to see from gears? Well, I mean, we'll, we'll obviously have a long list there. <laughs> yeah, wish list, and we want, no, we just talked about like the more better support for the syncing and perhaps the libraries built in and, yeah. you know, better integration maybe with the browser, for example, I mean, today if somebody installs Google gears, they have to restart a browser. If right. that can be avoided, that will be useful. And the automatic detection of, say, offline, online mode, some of them will can. So some of those will be useful. Okay. Right. And you, uh, we definitely want to thank you, guys for doing an awesome yeah. job. Oh, and this okay. is a core technology that we are very happy to be uh, leveraging for this. And it's, I think it helps the whole industry move cool. forward. Cool. Well, thanks a lot. Yeah, hopefully we'll all continue to innovate together and do some fun things. Yeah. Move thank the you. web forward. Yeah. Thank you. Great. Thank thanks you. a lot again, guys. Thank you.